Hi everyone, how are you guys tonight? Sorry about that. Uh, my name is Brandy. I am with Brushed by Brandy and I'm a Dixie Belle Paint brand ambassador. I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook and Instagram pages. So we are live tonight um, and I'm going to be doing some blending on this dresser behind me. But my husband Sean is here you guys as we're going along. If you have any questions, pop on and ask your questions and he will read those and help me answer them. Um, anything I miss, I'll go back and read. Uh, now granted, some of them I have to sound out. Yeah, but he'll do his best. He's been working on his spelling words all week. Keep a syllable small. <laughs> no more than three letters, please. Uh, tonight we're working on this dresser behind me, which is, if you guys have been watching my page, last week we did another piece in this same set, only we did it in sort of the uh, pinks and plum colors, and it's really pretty, you guys. It's really pretty. I'm looking at it right now. Um, there is another piece in this set that I did in blue. So do you guys have any guesses what this is going to be done in? So my goal with these was I wanted to make a set using the same uh, techniques, but all in different colors. And I do have kind of an inspiration in my head for these. So think of, uh, do you guys know the three fairies from uh, Sleeping Beauty, the, the Disney movie Sleeping Beauty, the three good fairies? Think of what colors they are. I've already got my pinks. I've already got my blues. What am I missing? Purple. Uh, that's kind of your cue. You did not just go grab that. Oh no. Here's what's, oh, here's what's fun with kids. Is when they think you're on a live, oh. they ransack the candy closet. Oh, we went to uh, we went to my sister's house. Oh, actually, can you throw me a Mr. Bottle? They're right there up on And then they look at each other and chew each other out because each one of them thought we were on the live when I walked in there. <laughs> we True fool! We went to my sister who lives out by the coast and we went and got saltwater taffy and they just were trying to raid the saltwater taffy because <laughs> mom and dad are busy right now. So Sean just broke up that ring, that crying ring. That, that went well. Um, so I'm actually going to work kind of down low on this piece tonight. You know what, I think these drawers might be swapped now that I think about it. I put them in, in the wrong order after I primed. Um, all that I've got done on this piece right now is I cleaned it really well and I added a coat of Dixie Belle Boss in Gray. Two coats of Boss in Gray. I said a coat. Yeah, because this one felt fit really tight and I numbered them the order that they came in, but I think that they were in the wrong order when I got the piece. So that doesn't help when you number your drawers, but they're in the wrong order. So let me try them in the reverse. But are they clean? Yes. Uh, well, so I clean. I just want to make sure your drawers are clean. I clean. I kind of clean my drawers before I start painting. Yeah, that's better. Um, but I clean them all the way at the very end because as you're painting, they're going to get dust in them from sanding. They're going to get, you know, if I scraped a little piece of paint off, it's going to get in. So I don't thoroughly clean my drawers until the very end. And that's when I'll clean them and I'll put Big Mama's Butter on them to oil the wood. Um, and that's when they really, really get refined. So, I mean, I wiped them out, like I vacuumed it when I vacuumed the piece, but it's not a thorough cleaning yet. And the sanding is fun, but I'll use this. And hopefully nobody hears the hurricane in the background. Yeah, sorry, it's too hot, guys. I have to have the air conditioner on. Okay, so I've got two coats of Dixie Belle Boss on there. It's a super smooth, clean base for my paint to go on top of. But before I paint, I'm going to go ahead and just um, give it a light sanding. I'm just going to use a Surf Prep Rad Pad. And I don't even really sand. I just brush my teeth. Just a, just a brushing, like a single pass. Uh, either the, the blue or the red Rad Pads or the Dixie Bell sanding sponges. I don't have a sanding sponge out here. i use one of those. Just to knock down any nubs or anything that is on here. Can you grab me a rag? Okay, I'm not gonna try to work all the way top to bottom on this tonight, because that's a big range. So I'm mostly gonna focus on this area that we can see. A uh, t-shirt, please. You wanna come up? So Sean just threw me a microfiber cloth, but they don't work very well for uh, dusting like this. So I just use a damp t-shirt rag. Some rags are better. Uh, microfiber cloths I like for burnishing transfers. But I don't necessarily like them for dusting things like this. Okay. 
So that gives me a really clean, smooth base to put my paint on top of. And let me show you what colors I'm gonna be working with tonight. So I'm gonna start down at the bottom and that's gonna be my darkest color, which is Dixie Belle Coffee Bee. This deep, rich brown. It's gonna be very fall greens, not like fresh spring greens. I'm gonna go more for the fall greens. So I'm gonna start with um, Coffee Bean and that's gonna go into collard greens. So you can kind of see those together. They're both nice and dark. And then around the center, I'm going to use buttercream because that's been my white that I've used on all three pieces in this set. So I'll have some buttercream in here, uh, collard greens, coffee bean, and up here is going to be a lighter green. So I pulled out kudzu and evergreen, but I don't think either one of them is the right color that I'm going for. So I'm going to mix a green for the top. And... I'm going to mix it out of my collard greens. So I'm going to mix it in this dish right here. I could use this container and just mix right in this container because I have so little collard greens left, but I want you guys to be able to see it. So I'm going to pour it into a, a, a separate dish. So I'm just going to, I'm just mixing. I have no idea how much guys. I mean, I'll probably just use all of what's left in here. It's almost empty. I'm not, I'm going to start with just lightening my collard greens a little bit with some buttercream. But I think it's going to be more gray than green. We'll see. So this is buttercream and collard green. So let's see what color I get. It so you were okay. scuff sanding because why? Because I just do a light sanding in between each coat. It wasn't even to scuff the surface. It's just to knock down any little dirt, like, you know, dust that might be in there. Anything that settled in my, uh, my boss. I mean... To really explain why I do it, I think you have to feel the difference from an unsanded coat to just that little brushing. Once you feel the difference that it makes, you're going to be like, oh, that's why she does it. You can feel it with your hand and understand why I do that little, um, that little scuff sand. It's not even a scuff. I don't want to call it scuff because I'm not trying to give any bite to the surface like a scuffing would. I'm, t I'm actually trying to smooth my coat out. Because here's the deal, guys. By the time I'm done with this piece, I've got two coats of boss on here. I'm going to put two coats of paint over the top. Um, if each coat has, a, you know, five specks of dust in it, by the time I'm done, I've got 20 specks of dust that are raised on my surface. So if I just do that light little sanding, then each coat is not going to be adding any unevenness to the one above it. So this is a pretty color. This is just buttercream and collard greens kind of like it. I might use this. So I have two bowls here. I'm going to give myself a little bit of this to use. And I'm going to tint this other one. I'm just splitting it 50-50. I'm going to tint this with a little bit of, what am I thinking? Uh, let's go with evergreen. So just random, but uh, Diane was on and said, hi, B and S. So if we both talk at the same time, is it just BS? Yeah, uh, I, only, I think only you need to talk for that. Oh. I don't even think it needs to be at the same time. You sure you want to keep your compliments to yourself? I mean, all right, so I'm just going to add a little bit of evergreen. I'm choosing evergreen because it's kind of an exaggerated green. And then I don't need to mix very much. I just want this to be a little more true green than gray. That's pretty. I really like that. All right, now that I see that, I'm going to add this portion back in because I really like it tinted with the um, evergreen better. So my mix that I've got right now is collard greens, buttercream, and evergreen. <laughs> and now that I added that back in, I'm just going to stir in a little bit more. So then just for fun, I'll wait a few minutes and then ask you the colors that you have in there. <laughs> One thing you can do whenever you're blending, if you make mixes out of the colors that you're going to use on the piece already, you know they're going to coordinate because they've got a base of the colors that you're already using. So this one, which I really like, it's, it's, a, it's a sage green, but it's um, dried sage, which is one of the Dixie Belle colors, is a little too brown for me for this look that I'm going for. So I wanted kind of a sage green. Let me show this Let's to get you. in there. 
So I started with collard greens because I'm gonna use collard greens on my piece so I know that it's gonna be the right shade, the right base. If I'm already mixing with one of my colors I'm using, it's gonna coordinate because it's one of the colors. So now that I've got my three colors, which are, it's gonna be four colors, collard greens, my mix, buttercream, and uh, I, I'm just gonna start out disappointing people. Sherry said she'd love to meet the two of us in Indy. Oh, ah, man, yeah. I know, It really doesn't happen. Um, we try not to be in the same place at the same time. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's like superheroes, right? Yeah. The anonymity that's, is there, that's right? That's like, why, because me and Sean are really the same person. <laughs> that's awkward. <Yeah. laughs> it's a lot to explain. I don't want to talk about it. It is California. <laughs> yeah. You can be anything you want to be. Um, here's the deal. If Sean comes with me, so do the kids. <laughs> Can't we just leave the kids behind? And then it's a totally different experience. I'm going to be working down low tonight. Can you see down where I am? I just thought you were playing around on the floor. Yeah, I have my shoes off. We're gonna. Uh, so I'm gonna start with this is coffee bean, and I'm gonna use my Dixie Belle Mini. It's going right over my base of Gray Boss. I chose the gray number one because Gray Boss is my favorite of all the boss. It is of all the, your bosses. It's the boss of the boss. Um. Anytime I can choose a color of gray moss, which I mean, really, it's pretty much all I use anymore is the gray. Um, it gets the best coverage. It's super smooth. All right. I think I'm going to go with it. But also because I'm using dark colors on my piece, I wouldn't want to choose white because white would be really hard to cover with these dark colors. So I'm going to start with my coffee bean, and I just really want my legs to be coffee bean, and this is something that all of the pieces in this set will have in common. They all have coffee bean across the bottom. And I'm going to run it up to about where I think I want it to end. I'm going to get into these little, this, these, uh, this set has a lot of gingerbread, all this, these are all original carvings to the piece. It's got a lot of details on it for me to dig my brush into. Is that called gingerbread? Yeah. Oh, man. You need to go inside and make sure the kids aren't getting that, oh, too. Oh, jeez, please. <laughs> I found some cookies <laughs> now. Um, I'm going to carry it up a little bit higher than I want the actual coffee bean, and that's to give me space to blend it into my next color when that comes down. Once I get all this on here, I'm going to take this piece and I will tip it back and get you know, this underside right here, I'll get all that too, but I'm, I will tip my piece backwards. This has its original wheels on it, which is actually really convenient for I'm me. I'm sorry, did you say something? Yeah, <laughs> They do need a little bit of WD-40. I'm gonna make sure that I get all the underside of these crevices. I'll get as much as I can, but there are gonna be little angles that I don't see and then when I tip this back up onto its back, at some point- They're just point, gonna reveal themselves. Yeah, they'll all come out. So I always look at my piece from different angles. Okay, I'm also like, why, Brandy? Well, There's no what is that, wax? There's no what? in there. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yeah, this is what I'm working with on my coffee beans. So instead of pretending that there's paint left in there, I'm gonna open a new container. Oh man, yeah. explain so much. <laughs> it's taking me extra water because I'm just trying to make extra paint out of my empty <sighs> container. All right, let's talk about opening a container of paint though. So when you first open it, this has been on my shelf for a while, it's gonna have this protective lid on it. Um, there's gonna be a skin of the paint. Oh, this one's gonna have it intact. Oh, it's so good. I love opening a new container. This is what it takes? <laughs> yeah, this is all. I'm I'm an easily excited girl. Okay, watch this. Wait for it. This has the skin on the top of the paint. Can you guys see that? I can't tip it because I don't want to get it mixed into the paint. That's a protective layer that go it forms over the top. I don't want to integrate that into my paint because it ends up that's chunks. Ta-da! See that? Sometimes it will stick to this little white lid, and if you can peel it off with those together, that's great but you don't want to mix that back into your paint, okay? It protected it, it did its job, but if you try to mix it back in, it's gonna be called chunks. Oh, here, this is 
uh, this is the lid from the evergreen and you can kind of see how the skin stuck to the top whatever you do with it you don't want to mix that back in and i don't keep these little white lids i take them off and now i've got a clean lid that can go back on my paint um and so i'm going to use that one now instead of trying to make a super empty paint go further there's Terry, let's not call each other names here <laughs> there is nothing like a new container of paint it's she said you two are cute it's so smooth I mean, you guys have never seen Sean on camera, so I wouldn't make a Well, people have. They're not on right now for <laughs> reasons. Oh, well, I mean, what, like your mom? Yeah. Um, all right, and let's get this leg over here. And then I'm bringing out all of these details in white after I'm done. And so they stand out really pretty against the colors. When I do the sides, I'll make sure I get all the way around this leg move my color this is a beautiful color mix like i'm going to use that all the time okay that's that's the coffee bean color collard greens and buttercream and i just poured in random amounts if i had to guess i don't know they're roughly even but i started with collard greens i never measure all right so i like that I'm going to set aside my brush and my coffee bean. So now you're going to answer the question that pops up in a few minutes. If you're using a separate brush for every color. Yes. <laughs> you should Wait just, for it. You should just run down the list of colors. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to run into the same problem. I used all the collard greens to mix that color. I have no collard greens left. So I got to open another new container. But it's my favorite thing to do. Seriously, I live for new paint. I almost look forward to emptying a container out. Okay, this one has the same thing. It's got the skin. This one's stuck to the lid. Don't try to save that. Let it go, guys. Let it go. Oh my gosh. All right, so this one I need to stir a tiny bit. I'm going to use this paintbrush with a really long handle. I don't want to shake it because I don't really want it all over my lid. Not like a Polaroid picture? <laughs> yeah. All right. And I'm going to take out another Dixie Belle Mini. So for this, I'll end up with four colors. I'm going to end up with four Dixie Belle Minis. I'm getting them wet. I don't always wet my brush beforehand, but it is super hot here. For the last, I don't know, 20 years or so, it's Did been Did you want me to turn the heat here. down? Get <laughs> the heater on, so thoughtful. All right, and that... Um, coffee bean is going to fade into collard greens. Do you, are you guys getting all the fall vibes from this combo? Um, I will take out my drawers and make sure I get all around my frame, but right now I just want to focus on getting my paint laid on. Oh, Monica, you can be jelly, but when it comes time to clean them, it's no, no oh, fun. Oh, of the brushes. Of your brushes. Yeah. Um, you know what? It, it took time, you guys. I have a collection, but believe me, it took me time to build up a collection. So, um, you know, it's an investment. And I always tell people, like, when you sell a piece, if you're selling your pieces, uh, reinvest a little bit back into your business from each piece. And you build your collection of things. So, uh, you know, whether it's a gilding wax or a, a brush or something like that, take a percentage, you determine what percentage it is from each sale you do of each piece. I know some people are doing this for their, uh, you know, at home, their own pieces, but if you're selling them, take a little bit and reinvest it into your business. And you, you buy a new gilding wax, a new mousse, another paint color, whatever it is, and you build that collection over time. It doesn't happen right away. So this is my, this collection is, you know, six years old now, some of this stuff. I'm still using some of the same wax as I got when I first started with Dixie Belle. Some of this stuff lasts forever. And once, once you build it up, then you're just replacing it as you use it. It gets a lot easier to maintain. <laughs> so she's got a, a caddy, like the one you have. She got it at the Dollar Tree, uh, inspired we by your store hacks. I thought we were talking about Cadillac. Not that kind of caddy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That makes me sound old. Oh my gosh. No, because uh, they still make them. My grandparents drove a caddy. Oh my gosh. 
All right, I'm kind of digging it into around all this trim work that's here. It's got a lot of detail. Uh, I mean, Can you dig it? I'm going to start lightening up my color. Not too far in. I guess probably a little bit higher than this. So I'm kind of brushing different directions because if I just went like this, it's always going to miss the same spots on those trim. It's like I painted it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, which is just really, glided across. A really nice dry brushing <laughs> technique. So I just go different directions to make sure I got all the different sides. And then again, if I see any areas when I tip this up onto its back, I just don't want to um, see that gray boss anymore. You can see, I mean, this is my first coat and this is going to take me two coats to cover, but that's pretty good coverage over the gray. So I'll end up doing two, but honestly, you know, I got, I don't see any gray there. Oh, do I actually clean brushes? Yeah, Sean does clean my brushes. He probably volunteers a lot. Uh, sometimes I turn it down. You guys might think I'm crazy. I like to clean my own brushes. Um, plus, there's, there's very few times that I'm okay with the grunt work, but I don't have this talent. So however I can help. Is, yeah, he needs to keep the machine working. Don't, uh, don't hurt the hand. <laughs> the painting hand um uh the other thing is usually if i've been painting i've got paint all over my hands anyways i gotta wash them which i gotta sit at the sink for you know scrub it off myself i might as well clean a brush while i'm doing it okay so it is my least favorite thing to do the other thing so think about this this brush that i use for the coffee bean it's now been sitting out for a few minutes it's gonna start drying so when you're blending your brushes get used really hard sometimes i'll just pick them up and mist it so if i'm not using the color it at least isn't going to get as crusty as if i was just leaving it there so just pick up your brushes and give them a mist if you know you're done with that color like i'm pretty much done with the coffee bean for tonight i'll do the sides later if you know you're done with that color have a dish of water <laughs> setting out debbie wants to know if the hand is insured <laughs> yeah, like jlo's thighs yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The insurance company was like, man, we have no idea what you're talking about. You cannot insure that. Hey there, Fireball June. No, those are not molds. Those are original to the These piece. These are all original to the piece. This whole piece, piece will have, and I'll bring them all out um, with white paint. So now I'm going to set my collard greens aside and let's go to this mix, which is a really pretty mix. I'm gonna wet my brush again for this. Okay, so let me explain why I'm gonna use the mix. I'm gonna go up into buttercream around the center of this piece. If I go directly from collard greens to buttercream, it's gonna be, that's a really harsh contrast. That's gonna take me a lot to mix. I'm gonna use this in between color to kind of start that blend for me because it has collard greens and, and uh, buttercream in it. So it's gonna naturally look like I'm starting my blend up into my lighter color. So if you've got a really harsh contrast like that that you wanna blend, mix it in a bowl. The color in between. And that's gonna make your life so much easier. So now you can kind of see going from this kind of medium green color into buttercream is going to be way easier for me because they're not as far apart. They're not that contrasting. Does that make sense at all? So I'm just going to brush this into my collard greens. That's a really pretty blend right there. <laughs> Holly says that, uh, we should paint individual nightstands. You and oh, I, yeah, like, but you have to paint with your left hand <laughs> and it will um, still turn out better. I think that's a compliment to Sean, right? You know, just before we got on tonight, we were talking about that and he was joking about going on camera and I said, eventually you're going to have to do it. I'm going to put him up to painting eventually. Um, he's not big on the idea. It's going to take some convincing, but eventually. I, he, Sean it's just going to be me and a couple of close friends that watch it. Sean has sprayed on camera before. You guys have seen Sean on camera spraying. 
So maybe if we just give them a project like that. But I want to give them like uh, one of the inspiration kits, one of the brand ambassador inspiration kits. Now, why would you do that? And uh, let them feel inspired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever it is, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, it'll be a kit that never sells another box again. <laughs> Look, Jacques came out with his own inspirational kit. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing in it. I didn't it. think that's any of the colors that were in the kit. I really like this color mix, you guys. This color right here that I'm using is a mix. I might have to point that AC away from me. It's drying my camera. That's fine. I can put it over to me. Yeah. I know. I was prepared to start seeing me sweat, guys. Um, but do we have to? This is a mix of collard greens, <laughs> buttercream, and oh, evergreen. Just a bunch of greens. Yeah, collard greens, buttercream, evergreen. Try to say that 10 times fast. Okay, go ahead. All right, and then I'm just gonna smooth out this where it uh, runs into the collard greens by brushing with my br uh, brush from the collard greens. And yes, you're misting it with water. Water, lots of water. I have the AC running directly behind me. It's blowing right onto my piece. My paint's starting really fast, so I just asked Sean to turn it away from me a little bit, just so it's not as direct on my piece. Um, yeah, so it's not getting as, uh, always your temperature and your climate matter. If it is hot and dry, my paint dries rapid fast. Even I opened this container of buttercream when I first got on. It's already starting to get a skin over the top of my paint just sitting out here. So if you're doing this mix and you're trying to match the other pieces, how do you go about doing so? Uh, they're all different colors. I don't have to match. If you. Oh, so what I usually do. Because I knew, I knew the answer to that part. Yeah. Uh, what I usually do is I have a swatch book. Um, I want you to try to find it. Oh, man. Do you know what it looks like? No. Uh, no, <laughs> totally, totally well, right out of the gate. No, yeah. <laughs> no. <Nope. clears throat> um, so I have a swatch book, and anytime I paint, I mix a color, I will paint myself a swatch in my swatch book. Nope. You know, I feel like you're not okay. Hang on, let me get to a place where I feel like I can leave this for a minute without it drying before I'm ready, and I'll go grab my swatch book. I'll show you guys what I mean. This is buttercream, okay. Even into this medium green that I mixed, I'm going to have to brush them together a lot. I don't want to have like this floating orb in the center. Okay, I want to brush it into that color, so I'm just going to brush them together. What's that brush you got? This is my Dixie Belle Mini, and this is the one from my Buttercream. So I just brushed it right into that light green. I use a lot of water. So until I'm done brushing these colors together, I don't want my paint to dry. I can re-wet it. Woo! Keep my paint wet until I'm done working them together. And then I'll step away and let it dry. Um, but I don't let the paint dry until I'm done working with it. So as long as I keep misting with that water, and the mister bottle delivers a really light mist of water. Oh, that's too bad. Somebody on Instagram said this is too boring. Is it? Huh, yeah. I wonder if there's any other Instagram pages you could go That's to. That's so weird. Yeah. Thanks for wasting your time. <laughs> uh, I feel accomplished. Yeah. Somebody go tell them how to use Instagram, please. I like when I get to let myself out. <laughs> All right. So that this is my brush for my medium green. I mean, I guess every video that Dixie Belle does is like watching paint dry, right? Literally. <laughs> All right. Be careful, you're going to pick up what I'm putting down. How pretty is that? What? That is beautiful. I love this color mix. Okay, so this is a place I feel like I can leave it for a second. Let me show you guys what I mean by my swatch book. I'm sorry, but that is gorgeous. Oh. Are you back here somewhere? Yeah, I know. Oh, is it joke time? I know I'm in the general right area of my workspace. Oh, here it is. Say what? 
I know. It's like um, it's like wow. a, it's like when your bedroom gets messy, but you know where everything is. I have one of those. Don't go in my night. I mean, yeah. Don't go That's in my night stand. Spaces. So this little black book right here is Sean's. <laughs> oh, I promise. This is not. It's totally empty. That's so weird. <laughs> Look. I'm it's, a taken man. It's been a slow 20 oh, yeah. years, okay? <laughs> okay, no. Speaking this, of. This is my swatch book. So it's a it's an artist book. It's heavy paper, like watercolor paper. And it's full... Not full, because I have plenty of pages left, but anytime I do a color mix, I make myself a swatch in my book, okay? And I label it with what is in the mix. So let's make one for this mix, because it's really pretty enough. Oh, a paint mix. Paint. I was going to make it like a mixtape. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> what am I supposed to play this on? Check, check, and check. Okay, so I would take probably with an artist brush and not this big brush. And I just paint a swatch. Like a watch? Swatch watch, yeah. Ooh, who had those? Ooh. I never had one. What? I know. I always wanted one, but we were too poor. I wanted Hold one. On, I, I was not a cool one. kid. Well, I don't want well, one Well, I mean, but you didn't have, you. That that's true, and you didn't have a, a swatch. Okay, so I painted uh, my mix into my book. And then I'll come back with a pen. I cannot find a regular pen, so I'll just <laughs> use this here Sharpie. I do like, here, let's, let's write with this here carpenter pencil. <laughs> That's just hanging out. Yeah. And I'll write on here what I use. So with, trying to without touching my paint. Let's write it upside down oh, like this. Man. How about that, Brandy? And then I'll write in here, it's evergreen. Here's your color recap. Evergreen, these are long names, buttercream. and collard greens. If I know what percentages they are, I'll try to write in there. It was about 50-50 or buttercream and collard greens and then just evergreen. 50-50 buttercream collard greens. Evergreen just to tint. Okay. So then I'll let this dry, right? And I'll have that swatch in my swatch book. Now, the next time I go to mix it, I'll mix it by eye. And then I'll just take a little dab of my paint and I'll touch it to the spot and let it dry, okay? And if it dries the same color, then I've mixed it correctly. If, I, if it doesn't dry the same color, I need to add something. Let me show you swatches that I've touched a color mix to. Okay, I want to let that dry without the pages sticking together. So, so this is one here. I'm going to get you close. Can you guys see I've touched it with a mix. Look, my mix was off. It did not dry to the same color because I can see the spot. So then I knew that I needed to add something to lighten that. Okay. So I chose of this mix, tea rose is what I used to lighten it and needed more tea rose. So that's how I mix colors. I've got places I've touched on this darker one. You can barely see them because they're pretty darn close. I'm not a machine, you guys, so they're going to be... Wait, wait, what? I mean, yeah, not your Android wife. I do have an Android phone, though. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so cool. Oh, man. Mom um, jokes. So they're not going to be exact every time. I always overmix so that I have enough left to at least finish this piece. Um... If I need to mix again, if I know that, oh my gosh, I'm getting to the end of this coat here, I'm going to run out of paint, I at least want to make sure I have enough to get through that coat um, so that I'm not running out halfway through. And then if I have to have a slightly different color on my next coat, it's okay. All right, that was a lot, huh? I understand if you guys tuned out for that. So I'm going to dampen my brush a little bit just because I let it sit for a minute. Sorry, sleeping behind the scenes. And this is going to go into my buttercream. I am going to get to the top of this tonight. Pretty impressed with that. So this, this drawer here will be nearly pure buttercream. On the edges, it'll get into the, a little bit of my green color. So your coffee bean is only way at the bottom on the legs. 
That's all I used the coffee bean for. Can yes. you see it way at the bottom That's, of the legs? I think it was Susan that was just with a question mark. So you did mention evergreen. Yes. In this batch. This all my all my colors sound the same tonight, and I'm sorry, you guys. I have four colors. One of them is a mix. So technically that there's five colors involved in this piece. I will run through them again right now. Coffee bean at the very bottom goes into collard greens and then a mix of collard greens, buttercream, evergreen, and then pure buttercream. You guys are not going to get that at all. <laughs> Even I'm like, what color should I use? This is my mixed green. This is that really pretty sage color. Um, so I just brushed it onto the edge. Now I'm coming back with my brush from my buttercream. And I'm going to do a little horizontal, a little vertical. Okay, and I'm going to work those together. And then right here where I want it to go to the pure buttercream, I'm going to freshen up with pure buttercream. Do you find either Boss or Slick Stick or obviously one or the other make it a little harder for blending? Um, I actually love painting over the Boss or the Slick Stick. I actually think it makes it easier. I like that it gives... But which one? Do you have a preference, one or the other? I, um, I realize there's you know, differences in coatings, but... Please give me Gray Boss anytime I can get it. Even if I maybe don't need Gray Boss, I just love painting over it. It's a beautiful base. This is Gray Boss up here. Um, slick stick too though, because it gives a little bit of bite to your paint. So versus going over wood, you know, some wood can have a, be a little bit slick. It, not even to the point you need slick stick, but it just, if it's got a finish on it, you know, your paint doesn't stick as well. I just love the way that the boss and slick stick kind of grab onto your coat of paint and hold it where you want it to. I love the base that they give. I would paint over gray boss, even if I probably don't need it just because it's a nice base. You know, so it's not all bad. You might be like, oh, I have to prime my piece. I'm, I, I just love, like it lays, lays the paint on really well when you have to put those primers on. It's like they were made to be primer or something. <laughs> no? All right, and then I'm going to go, and my mix is going to be the color that I end with up top here. And I have to dig around all these. These are like spindles. It's like half a spindle. Spindles are made by the devil. He invented them just for painters. That's weird. Yeah. I don't remember reading about that. It was. It's a it's a Bible story about mm, making one of the last books. About making okay. spindles. Okay. Uh, just trust Interesting. me. Interesting. Just mm -hmm. trust me. I know what I'm talking about. Um, spindles are not fun to paint. So I make sure that I dig it into the sides with my brush, and then I'm going to come use this horizontal and kind of get the the face of them. Because if you go like this, it's going to catch in every little groove of your spindle, brushing like that. A little bit of water helps it find those little crevices. Speaking of water, I missed this part right here. Now I'm going to be forced to fix it. So that's okay. Uh, <laughs> when you miss, do you get any tiny spots yeah, that you'd have to blend you do. out? If they're tiny, you can usually leave them alone and they'll just evaporate. But in that case, I had enough that it was dripping. So I wanted to correct that before it made a drip mark in my paint. So if they're tiny, 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 literally just a mist in your paint, you can just let it dry. Just let it evaporate, leave it alone. Once you touch it, you have to fix it. If you brush through it, you're gonna cause the paint to move. You gotta fix it. And then I just re-blend that little area just like I just did on that spot. For the most part though, you can let them evaporate out. Um, when you're doing a piece like this that has multiple colors, I also don't need very much of each color. Um, you know, one, 
a dresser like this, I could probably do two coats with an eight ounce of paint. So especially when I'm using four or five colors like on this piece, I, I only need a small container of each. <laughs> oh, man. So she's also the one that asked about the, the spray and having to blend it out. So she says no need for all the cursing that she does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, sometimes that helps. <clears throat> sometimes you just need to. Yeah. You need to vent. Got to break through the wall. Yeah. That's what. But that, not the real wall. That's what the brand ambassador team does to each other. We just vent on our pieces to each other. All right, I can't see on that side, so hopefully I kind of got this covered. And then I'll do this little section right here. You guys will kind of have an idea. And then I'll take you guys over. We'll go for a field trip, and I'll show you guys huh? the other two pieces in this set so you can kind of get an idea where I'm going. They're not done yet. I'm still working on them. So is misting required um, for doing this? You know. This style? I would, with blending, yes. Blending, I'm blending the paint colors together. That's what this is called. You definitely need water, and a mister bottle lays the paint on differently than a regular spray bottle. Can you blend without water? Man, that would be really tough. All right, this is my brush from my buttercream. I did not add any paint to it, but I'm just going to kind of lighten this little section where they meet up. Just the edges. Yeah, I can't if see you need, over there. Okay. I'd have to turn the piece. Okay. <clears throat> going on? Yeek! Yikes! That yeah, looks yeah. bad. All right, so I clearly couldn't see that from the angle I was at. I want to get... <laughs> Do we have to pack a lunch, or will one be <laughs> provided for the field trip? <laughs> um, you're gonna need yeah. a, you're gonna need a parent's permission slip, and you need to pick a buddy. All right, so I think that's better. And then I'll, of course, do... I like to paint the sides of my pieces, too. I mean, I don't At know. At some point. I don't know why, because you could just put it up against a wall. Yeah. And I stack it on its side. Yeah, I just make sure that I don't have any blobs of paint gathered there so that I can leave it and come back and get that, too. Now, the top color is your mix of colors. Yes, that is this mix, which is a really pretty sage green. So if you're looking for a true sage green, collard green... Buttercream, evergreen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a, this is a pretty combo. So this is kind of, this is my first coat. This is conceptualizing. I really, really love the colors. It's very, they're very fall green. So you know what I mean? It's not, this is true evergreen. Whoa, like it's not this bright green. It's very much the sage greens. Looking at my drawer right here, I've got a little piece where my paint was connecting, I don't want it to dry like that. So I'm just gonna smooth that out and then I can close my drawer again. You know, I, I'll go through, if I see spots where I've got connection, don't let it dry like that. See what I mean? As long as I take it off before it dries, I really need two handles on this. Like I need a it's almost like they thought of that when they put two holes in yeah. it. Huh, that drawer just is heavy. <clears throat> All right, that looks pretty good. So do you guys want to go see the other pieces in this set so you can kind of know where I'm going with it? Let me shut this paint. I am hot. So let me show you my brushes. You can see the gradation. The white, which is buttercream, my mixed green, collard greens, and coffee bean. That's where I landed on my colors. I didn't use another brush for blending, but I will on my final coat. And these are two options. One is the best sting brush, and then this is the oval medium. I like them both. I feel like the best sting brush, I get a little more texture, but it will move the paint together. So these are both, both good options for a blending brush. For when I really want to perfect these transitions, I have brush strokes in them right now, but when I want to perfect them, these are what I'm going to use. I'll do that on my next coat. Ooh, I like when people on Instagram get creative. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah, it's always a good I time. I see you over there pushing the delete buttons. Yeah, so. I like when people push my buttons. Uh, you know what? Instagram just not got a new feature where you can block comments during lives. Oh, but they're <laughs> like, so cute. I think they got the hint about what was going on during Instagram lives. Okay. 
So I'll wash these in a minute, but let's go look at the other pieces that are going to go with this set. <laughs> I'll wash these later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By that, I mean, sure, I'll yeah. wash these later. Okay. So. Okay, where are we going keep, on this field trip? Keep this color scheme in your head, and let's go over here. Well, tell me where I'm going. So, right, how about that? To the vanity. To the wizard of Oz. What are we doing here? So this is the vanity that's going to go with it. Can you see, even though they're not the same Yes, Debbie, colors, I'll come back to that. I promise. They could coordinate enough to go in the same room. So that's kind of my goal. It's a fun set. It's a really fun set, and they can either go separately or they can all go together. So we did the pink on the vanity, and then we'll turn around... And the three drawer chest right can you see how they coordinate guys okay now do you see kind of my inspiration with the three good fairies right sleeping beauty does anybody else get it am i on my own here you're I'm oh you're definitely on your own in this room post a picture so you guys know what i'm talking about i'm going to come back to this piece we're working on oh the green someone yeah. wants to see the green again okay, yes all right so well we, a full shot because it's just been sectioned out because oh, you were sitting in front of it okay so I'm going to pop off, but um, a couple notes for you guys. There you go, Debbie. I did a live earlier on the page. Um, me and Leah Noel from, or and Leah Rex from Leah Noel Design Co. are going to be teaching at the Pinterest conference in that. Indianapolis in October. So if you guys are yearning for in-person classes, the Pinterest conference in Indianapolis, um, you can either message me for a link. I've got it posted on my page. It's on the Dixieville page. Um, the Pinners Conference, or you can Google Pinners Conference. And it is put on by Pinterest, and me and Leah are gonna be teaching four classes. One of them I'm gonna be teaching is gonna be this uh, fall look, but it's got a little bit of blending techniques in it, some stippling, we're gonna use some alternative paint techniques, we're gonna use silk screens and stencils and mousse. There's a whole bunch of techniques in this piece that you can take and translate to your furniture pieces. Um, everything you create at Pinners, you get to take home with you, too. They are free classes included with your admission. So you guys, go check out the Pinners Conference. It's in Indianapolis, October 8th and 9th. Me and Lee are going to be there. We're going to be teaching classes. We're going to be painting furniture all day in the booth when we're not teaching classes. It's going to be an amazing, amazing event. Every type of creative outlet that you can imagine is at the Pinterest Conference. So if you guys... Um, are looking for anything like that. It's a great girls weekend, mother-daughter weekend. Really, really fun. And uh, Oh, we're not gonna have any fun here. No, you're not. Sean's gonna be home with the kids. I wish I could take him, it would be a blast, but if they're so, I mean, I don't even sit down. We just run on caffeine and adrenaline for two days straight. We, you, don't, you may get a meal, maybe. So trying to have like Sean and the kids there, forget it. I've done it before and I don't even see them. So, um, so yeah, check that out. I do have a new YouTube video coming out tomorrow. A new tutorial comes out every week on my YouTube channel. So check out Brushed by Brandy on YouTube. If you're just getting started, I've got videos on there for everything from basic techniques to when you want to get into some more fancy finishes, you can find everything on there. And um, tomorrow's is going to be really pretty, kind of just a sleek, smooth, we're going to use a silk. It's a beautiful finish. So check out my YouTube channel for a new video tomorrow. Um, I'll be back here next Thursday to paint with you guys. I hope you like this. I love this color mix, and I will catch you guys next Thursday. Have a good weekend.